Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, DK Diamantes, and on this podcast, we learn about the crazy, wacky world of Warhammer 40k from near lifelong fan Bricky. Uh, also, if you enjoy today's podcast, please be sure to check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. We have a bumpin' Discord that has tons of amazing emotes, and uh, you can get tons of rewards like access to the blooper reel, HD posters, fantastic stuff like that. But um, we're going to get into today's episode. Today is, I'm calling today our Cyberpunk 2077 video because holy shit, look at all those bugs. So, Bricky. <laughs> 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 I did not think you would go that direction. That's and it's the direction not even, I chose. <laughs> it's not even wrong. I just, I don't know. I thought maybe because it was going to be like short. So it's like, it's going to be shorter than you expected or has less penis customization or like <laughs> some, something that else besides that. But that's just pretty good. I don't, that was the obvious answer too, but I don't know why my mind didn't go that way. Yeah, it was, it was between make a cyber 2077 joke or raid. But, uh, raids uh, there. I guess you can do that. We, did, we, did, we didn't get the sponsorship, too. so I mean, no, no raid. So it could have it could have been a Fallout seventy six joke. True, but I feel like you know Cyberpunk was more on like the the forefront. You know, Fallout. It's been shit for a while. That that horse has been beaten to death. It's been taken to the glue factory. It's you know that's that's old news. Cyberpunk though, everyone knows how buggy and shit that thing is. That's that's true. That, that that's true. Hopefully it gets better. I I still haven't I still haven't played it yet. I kind of I I just haven't tried it yet. I kind of want to, but I want to wait for it to work. There, yeah, wait for it to work. There's good things there, but uh, like I said, it's it's a lot of bugs. Also, the campaign is very short, like today's episode. Right, it's gonna be a little shorter because it's the nids. It's, it's the, the bugs. nids. So for those Nid fans out there, so that's a pretty diehard Nid fans. And and the Nid fans have been kind of like they're kind of like a battered housewife. Um oh, they don't oh, they don't geez. get treated well by, by GW whatsoever. <laughs> they constantly okay. hope it's gonna get better and it never does. Um I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say I'm going I'm going deep in the barrel here. Right. Um, <laughs> nid, nids are nids are awesome. Nids are super mm. cool. They're super like uh, awesome. Like, like the idea, the concept, they're all cool. But GW has a way of telling their stories, which is always from an outside perspective or from a survivor's perspective, which makes them fucking terrifying. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it means that lore wise, we have very, very little. Like back in the day, Necrons used to just be unthinking, unfeeling robots with no motives or anything. They were just like mm -hmm. Terminators. And then they decided like, you know, that's dumb. And they decided to make like <laughs> dynasties and characters and yeah. all that fun stuff. Now I the Nids are just like, mmm, biomass. And that's kind of where <laughs> they are. That's kind of where they stayed. Mmm, biomass. I I do kind of like the idea of it being told just from outsider perspectives. Because like we were saying uh, before the podcast started, it's like, how much lore can you really say? Because they're just sort of mindless bugs that, as far as I know, uh, when they conquer your planet, they turn it into a giant uh, soup plantation and just slurp it up. Um, so <laughs> how much... <laughs> <laughs> How much lore, like, from their perspective can you really have? But it is kind of cool that it's all just survivor perspective. It's just like, oh, God, I survived that fucking nightmare. Let me tell you about this awful, awful race of bugs that ate everything and then ate themselves. So that's the weird thing about the Tyranids is that this is a relatively recent addition to 40K, not in terms of, like, actually added. But in terms of actually, like, like, like in the timeline, the, the Tyranids first were found in uh, year forty thousand seven hundred and forty-five. Like, Oof. we're in like year nine nine nine, I think. So they've only been around for two hundred and fifty something years. Oh, so in, we, which, in Warhammer time, that is a short time. A lot of Imperials literally don't know uh, Tyranids exist. Like. <laughs> Okay. But a lot of them don't know Necrons exist. I, if we're being honest, we have the outsider perspective. A lot of like Imperials, Imperial citizens, citizens have no idea what a Necron is or what a Tyranid is because they never 
they they know about the Eldar. They know mm -hmm. about the uh, the powers of chaos. You know, they right. know about that. They know about the orcs. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't really know about the rest because either they couldn't talk about it or they've just not been around for enough. That, that's true. They've never really encountered them. They've never had a reason to encounter them. They're probably not getting all the them, news from the space marines. Yeah, if they've encountered them, they've probably already been eaten because they're citizens. So yeah, that actually that even makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's a it's definitely the horror alien. It's so obvious that these are xenomorph based uh, characters. <laughs> it's not even it's not even like a, the the slightest of a of a yeah. um, subtlety. A uh, very starship troopersy as well. Um, mm -hmm. it has a very good vibe of the, uh, like, a Guard versus Nids is one of my favorite matchups because I, you know, I play Guard and it's got a very good, like, I'm doing my part and then the guy just gets eaten <laughs> by the bugs. Um, definitely some Cthulhu vibes as well, uh, between, mm -hmm. like, some of the tentacle monsters and also that whole thing. But anyway, let's talk, let's talk about the Tyrants, let's talk about their history, which will be very short, and we'll get a lot more into, like, what they're, what they do, like, their bodies and shit. Okay. Um, so the Tyranids are not from the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, that's right. the, that's the big thing, is that they actually came from the dark space of the, uh, of the, in between the galactical void. Kind of where, um, the Silent King was chilling. Which oh, is exactly okay. why he saw them. He was like, oh no! And he ran back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so oh, they right. he did see them. I yeah, he saw them. That. He went to go like be sad, and then they rolled past him. He's like, ah, and then he came home. <laughs> yeah, so time to stop being sad and start being scared. <laughs> so we don't know why or where. Um, some people said that Gilliman did something, or maybe it was Tigerius. I don't remember who, but some ultramarine douchebag uh, did something <laughs> that got the Tyranids to roll up. Or maybe it was Magnus. I think it was uh -oh. something during the Horus Heresy where someone did some big psychic thing, and then the Tyranids were like. Yo, is that gamer girl feet? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and then, oh, they, and then they moved their way over. <laughs> it, it, it's it's <laughs> theorized. There's no like 100% confirmed thing, but it's the assumption. Um, when you said gamer girl feet, I my skin crawled like bugs. <laughs> so thanks for that. It's all very thematic, and I hate it. <laughs> you got to do the ASMR thing where you just get really close to the mic. You're like, is that gamer girl? <laughs> Uh, my skin is crawling. <laughs> Good. It's bugs. It's episode. bugs. <laughs> so they, um, so Shai tells me it was originally the Emperor's Golden Throne light, but again, like, really, really don't know, and it doesn't matter. Point being, is the Tyranids came here. Um, now there's a couple of reasons as to why. There's the theory that they're actually doing the Halo thing, where they're actually running from something. Uh, oh. And they're actually fleeing like something much more terrifying or perhaps some kind of like uh, natural dis galactic disaster. Mm -hmm. Or they have the possibility that the Tyranids actually, uh, you know, consumed the goddamn galaxy and are just moving on again, <laughs> oh. uh, which is pretty terrifying. Yeah. But the biggest and scariest part of the Tyranids by far is the fact that if you take a, a picture of the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, I'll give you a little bit of a link here. Um, okay. If you look at the Milky Way galaxy, there are different hive fleets. There's hive, like, like it's like different kinds of, um, you know, it's different kinds of fleets. So you have uh, Moloch, you've got Jormungandr, Kraken, Behemoth, Hydra, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. each hive fleet has entered the Milky Way galaxy from a different section. Oh. So there's the good possibility that they might just legitimately be surrounded oh. on all sides of the Milky Way is just nothing but nids. And so oh, it's a pretty boy. spooky fucking premise. It's like, oh man, look at this gigantic fleet of nids coming out of dark space over on the bottom right hand corner. And then like another size just as big yeah. arrives from like the top. Like what? No. Oh, they, so there's nowhere to run. You're always going to have to fight through some Tyranids if you want any sort of relief like if you want to flee yeah. from them you have to fight them well and flee where though like this is the milky way this is the entire galaxy if you want Ugh. to flee you have to go to like andromeda which god knows how long that'll take Ooh, and and, and what if the tyranids true. ate it all <laughs> but, <ooh. laughs> the tyranids are very scary there there's so many of them 
They are, they are probably, with the exception of Chaos, actually, maybe even with Chaos, they might be the largest threat in the galaxy. They might be number one. Ooh. I think they are yeah. number one, actually. If the orcs got bounded together or bind together, then they would be number one, but... Nah. They don't, because they're stupid. Because they're big <laughs> dum-dum head. <laughs> they're but, hilarious, but really funny. They're very, they very funny, but unfortunately, they have this, unfor this horrible disease called the dumb. So... <laughs> The Tyranids, they basically did like a hibernation all the way across the way, and they woke up, and now they're very hungry. Oh. So the first ever encounter with the Nids was on a planet called Tyran. Now, as we remember, everything about Tyranids is secondhand. So the reason they're even called Tyranids is because they were first found at the planet of Tyran. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tyranids. Tyranids. Oh, okay. The pieces, yeah. they're they're fitting together. I like it. I like it. Yeah, because just nobody knows. Like, like if you know if you know certain named characters in the codex for Nids, they're almost all named as if by other people. There's the Red Terror, there's Old One Eye, the Swarm Lord. <laughs> they don't have like actual like the name isn't just <laughs> it's like some weird <laughs> You know, they, they, it was given a name, you know? Yeah, by a survivor that saw how feverishly they ate people or how big they were or the big red claws or something. Yeah. It's it's good, too, because in the Tyran, it was where High Fleet Behemoth arrived. And the Tyran oh, fight no. is like the big, <laughs> big opening. Behemoth, I think, is the biggest one, too. Uh -huh. um, Tyran as well as be is name. as it should be. This is the big fight where it was kind of great because even though they may have won, it was a good chance to watch the Ultramarines get fucking bodied because <laughs> the Tyranids arrived on this planet. Ultramarines arrived and they were like, what in the ever living shit is that? And then their big boy, their man, their, their boy man, Marnius Kalgar, which is their chapter master. He's known as Papa Smurf and um, <laughs> because Gilliman, Gilliman is Grandpa Smurf. Or granddad Smurf, but All right, so he's because they're blue. So, so I like, it, I get it. Like the Primarch is the Emperor's son. The Chapter Master is like the leader of like the chapter of Marines, right? Um, so he he went out on one v one the Swarm Lord, which is like this big big fucking Tyranid, <laughs> and uh, he got both of his arms and his leg hocked off. Oh. <laughs> and then his entire honor guard company escorted him out of there, and we're all eaten. <laughs> oh. And and wow. then after after that they uh, sent a, a big ass like emperor class battleship, which thanks to the fact that um good old uh, technology is backwards they can't recreate, and so they sent it and like detonated its warp drives for to send it into the warp with a bunch of nids and like stop them from killing them all, but oh, the, <laughs> but it's like that that's like the it's like, it's like the assumption of of um. It's it's like destroying it's like burning your house down to kill a spider. It's right. not I don't know if it's quite worth it. Yeah, uh, it, but I, it's the nids though. So I mean, it it's do a little be the more nids. than a spider. The um, um uh, shy posted a picture of that that stupid drip version of Marnius Kalgar. Uh, if you could notice he's got very large arm and and uh, and stuff and that's because he's got giant power fist arms now cuz he has no arms. Cuz he has no uh, legs too, right? Well, he has one leg. He's got one good oh, leg. Okay. Oh, that's why it's draped in that 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 red cloth. Gotcha. Because the other the, one sucks. Um, yeah, the other one's stupid. <laughs> yes. Any story that's like, hey, you want to hear about how the Ultramarines got fucking bodied? I'm like, yo, I'm in. They technically won. In. They technically won the fight, but like, nah, nah. Fuck nah. the Ultramarines. They didn't win shit. They got bodied. <laughs> they got bodied. So fuck let me Ultramarine fans. Let me try to explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Luton. Blue. <laughs> Poor Luton. <laughs> what a bunch of blue bullshit. You're giving me blue balls because I'm stuck constantly being edged by bad chapters. Oh, <laughs> so, get fucked, Ultramarine fans. You know they're, they're pretty all right, but it's it's GW's yeah. fault. It's it's blame Games Workshop. Yeah. <laughs> so the Tyranids. With that whole thing, it's it's mainly about trying to understand what the Tyranids are. That's mm -hmm. the that's the big thing we need to talk about. Because it's, it's not I don't want to talk about the battles because they're just battles. I don't mm -hmm. I don't really want to talk about like 
like all all the major like I mean the characters maybe we'll have a different episode for but I want to specifically talk about just like the structure the physiology of the the tyranids because that's what kind of makes them so terrifying. Okay. So the tyranids have at its base core they are the hive mind. Um, they're known as the forces of the hive mind, mm -hmm. um, which is also uh, where they can do gene stealer cults. Which I guess we can talk about that a little bit, but. Um, the hive mind, the idea is that the Imperium have found that each and every single Tyranid in its own right has a very limited consciousness, but it all feeds back into a psychic synaptic idea to other larger bugs into eventually the hive mind itself. So every single bug acts in a perfect unison. They are okay. all complete because they, they all share one mind. Yeah. And now obviously they, it gets will down a little bit like i think if you remember the geth um yes. it's like yes, it's yes. like one geth alone big dumb lots of geth gets smarter and then the big geth server it's right, kind of right. like that like legion was a thousand geth right which is why he mm -hmm. was so intelligent so legion would be like uh like a swarm lord is like a hundred thousand geth you know it's like a really big Ooh. one and then the hive mind is like trillions you know it's yeah, insane yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> So the hive mind, uh, we're not quite sure if the hive mind itself has like a physical form or property. If it does, it's probably out there in dark space, completely safe and not actually like going to have a problem. But to an extent, like tiny little ones, like for instance, these little guys called termagants or hormagants or ripper swarms. Mm -hmm. Ripper swarms are like the size of like a cat, I think. Aww. And, and But they, they go in like, or maybe like, like ma mice. But they they cover the walls, and, and oh. they look they look like they look like um like a wave like a legitimate wave of water because there's so many oh. of them. It's like the scarabs in the mummy. Oh, that's gross. They run that's to they're gross. like ah, and then they fucking eat you. <laughs> yes, and, God, that's 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 okay. Yeah, that's terrifying. And then like yep. a termagon, I think is the size of like like a like a maybe like a large dog. Uh, termagons okay. have like like a little gun. And um, the hormigons have like little stabby, little stabby claws. Um, mm -hmm. So they all have like different variants and such. But the high, but those guys themselves, they're not very intelligent. They kind of, they're very instinctual. They're like, oh, yeah. food. And they run up to you and they try to kill you and eat you and, or shoot you and stab you. Um, right. They'll often, because of that, you'll have these much larger bugs, things called like carnifexes, which are like the size of cars. And then like, actually, Whoa. I think carnifexes are actually a lot bigger than cars. Yeah, they're actually it's way bigger a, than the cars. They're like, they're like the size of a semi truck. It's also a gun in Mass Effect. We got lots of Mass Effect references. Oh yeah, that big fucking pistol. I love that gun. Yeah, everybody loves it's... that gun. That's the best. It's so cool. The um, it's not it's not the the M set the uh the Matic though. The real Matic mm. enjoyers up and how on about here. <laughs> um, but then you got like some big big Tyranids like the there's like the Turvagon, which is like a mother version, and it has a bunch of Termagons in like a belly that like refreshes them. You've got like the Ooh. Tyranophyte and the Tyranophex, which have like giant poison spitting guns. There's the Toxicrine, oh. which is like this giant tentacle thing. There's like all of these different, uh, the Exocrine, which has a giant penis gun. There's like <laughs> the, the, the Hive Mind are like super adaptable because they okay. take biomass and they morph it and they adjust it and they and they like can create whatever they need in order to, for the job that they they want. You got to get people down little holes, get to send in a bunch of little termagants. Uh, you need some big scary bugs, get ourselves a little bit of like uh some card effects or or maybe some like the swarm lord big guy. Like it all swaps around there. But the hive mind makes it so that let's say let's say you get lucky and you kill off like a tier in a Carnifex or something, right? Uh -huh. Something big. Well, yeah. all the termagants around there were kind of using it as like a synaptic node. So when it dies, all the termagants start going like, Wee! they start like losing their shit. They start oh. like running in circles or like attacking the random shit. And they start like going mad because they've lost like the neural link. Oh, okay. Um, now, now, obviously, it, it makes them work a lot worse. It's, they're, not, they're not like less of a threat. They're still quite a threat, but they start like kind of freaking out and being weird and causing problems. Mm -hmm. And well, like, would they start attacking their own people because they don't have like, would they attack other Tyranids because they don't have that note anymore and they don't know what the fuck to do and they're just going crazy? I don't I'm not 100 percent sure. My mind says yes, or at least my mind will say they're not good enough at shooting or stabbing that they'll stab the wrong things accidentally. <laughs> 
<laughs> so so either... you were tactical enough about it, and you attacked these, and you knew to attack these nodes. Could you actually like form a strategy to like not get fucked over by the Tyranids? You could. The problem is that the Tyranids come in in waves that like blot out the sun. Like, oh. okay, you know, you know what? Okay, so here's here's actually a great example. Right. Um, so the hive mind itself, and this is one of the reasons why the Tyranids are so scary, is that when a Tyranid dies, it doesn't lose the hive mind. It simply loses the biomass itself. So a oh. dead Tyranid does not feed chaos. Okay. And, so, so like, if you were a person and I were to cut off your big toe, your soul would Ow. not go to chaos, would it? No, I suppose it wouldn't, because you're not really, you know, it's just your big toe. Like, it's not yeah. your soul. Oh, okay. That's what killing Tyranids is like. It doesn't feed the warp because they themselves do not have a thing. Now, now if the hive mind were to die, that would be fucking catastrophic. Oh, if yeah. the hive mind were to be sent to the warp, my, I mean, I have nothing to back this up, but I'm assuming it would either become a new chaos god, or mm -hmm. or it would just like completely wreck everything. If the hive mind were to go, there would be it would be as like probably significantly more detrimental than even if the emperor went, because it's it would be such an absolute Jeez. like destructive force. But that, because that of that, sounds that sounds like the opening for chaos tyrannids, right? There would be so many Tyranid fans that would be upset if that happened. <laughs> they would be Chaos so pissed off. <laughs> um, so, but the, the thing is, is that the, the Tyranids do, because the hive mind, have a presence in the warp in general. So mm -hmm. Tyranids are actually, there's a lot of psychers. There's a ton of Tyranid psychers. Almost all the big monsters huh. are psychers. That seems it, so weird. It is a little bit weird. Like the Neurothrope looks like a bug with a giant brain, and it like yeah. it fires a it fires a bunch of like laser beams and shit, and or it would it would give like fancy buffs and stuff. But the thing, yeah, Shy just typed it. And I was about to talk about that. Is the shadow in the warp, which might be the most terrifying bullshit ever. So okay, in the tabletop, it makes it so that if you're near a Tyranid Psyker, you have a harder time casting psychic powers. But it's like okay. if you take the warp, it's almost like it's like a shadow moving behind you. It's like if you're walking down during the golden hour, right? You're walking home and you got that long shadow in front of you, you know, yeah, and then sure. right to your right, there is a shadow equal, like almost equal length as yours, but no one is oh. walking to your right. But oh, I don't like that. <laughs> but there's a shadow there. So the Tyranids have like their own manipulation of the warp. So what would happen is deliberately as a high fleet moves into an Imperial world, the Imperials, the Astropaths will try to like get a warning out, but then they'll, they'll open up the psychic, um, the, like the psychic connection to the warp and they'll just start losing their minds because the Tyranids start reaching their way into the mind of the person and suppressing oh. it. So you That's... literally can't call for help. Oh, God. So once they're on you, like, there's no calling for help. It's just like, yep, you're probably going to get eaten. Yep, because you try, you see the, you look up and you see a t Tyranid fleet. So, like, you wonder why the sun is no longer shining. And it's because you look up and it's nothing but tiny dots covering the entire sky of Tyranids. Oh. And then you're like, oh, no. And then you open up a psychic link. And then the Tyranids are like, Nero! and they then they turn you off, and they're like, zip, nope. Oh, so there's no calling man. for help. You'll never get reinforcements, and and that's and that's that. And the Tyranids will will descend upon you and eat your whole world. And that's the oh. problem is that biomass is what they eat. They eat anything organic, anything yeah. that has biomass, people, pets, anything, fauna, and it all gets like coagulated and turned into more tyranids so that's what's Ooh. really scary is like okay if you maybe can form a militia militia maybe you can form a fighting force if they've already eaten a third of the planet th that means they're a third per like 30 percent stronger because they've yeah, turned all of your boys tyranids. yeah oh. they they send out spores and, and acid like they're they have guns tyranids have guns and the guns are made of flesh 
They're they're all oh. <laughs> they're all flesh based weaponry, and their ammunition is alive. When oh. they they fire at you, it's tiny tiny viruses and micro and flesh eating organisms that fly oh. in a curl of acid, and it hits you, eats through your flesh, and then the tiny little bugs get underneath your skin and start consuming you. Ah, oh, gross! That's I so know. disgusting. Oh my, like, <laughs> at least if you get hit with a bolt or shot in the chest, it's just like, okay, that's it. Uh, instead, you get hit by a gun that's potentially made out of scrotes, and... Oh no, more scrote guns! <laughs> yeah, scrote guns! Uh, last episode, we had the scrote cloth, now we've got the scrote guns. Uh, because we have the mental capacity of 12-year-olds, but uh, Dude, <laughs> they I shoot, I like, virus shots, and they just start eating you, and... Ugh. I want I want to model a Tyranid that has, like, the fucking ball chin from, like, Men in Black, and I want to make it... <laughs> I want to make a cannon that he... Part his entire gun's ammunition is specifically made from scrotes. He goes around, and he makes sure... <laughs> he makes the... Hey, guys, eat the... You can eat the humans, but don't eat the scrotes. I need them. And he loads him into his gun. Uh, head on over to the Patreon if you like this scrote centric content, everyone. Hey, at least for the Night Lords, it made sense. The Tyrion is, they're just like, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Jeez, they're so gross. I hate it. Oh, oh my, it. oh, my God. I don't. Oh, oh, shit. Shy just reminded me that I think the Pyrovore does kind of look like is that an actual fucking no that that's that has to be that has to be a photo oh my god it's not that's such a fucking penis i was gonna say that's a very phallic cannon on that tear in its armored back um holy holy shit i mean i thought the exocrine was the most penis looking one but hot damn <laughs> I mean, it's also it also has a lot to do with how these guys are painted. Like, if you painted that cannon the same color as his armor, it might not be so bad. But maybe, maybe but that's that's some that's some phallic fucking shit. That right is there. that is super phallic. Also, whatever that thing is that Shai just posted, like the white one with its mouth open and all those like tentacles coming out. That, oh, that shit was, is super hella gross and scares me. That that's that was me. Uh, that's the horror specs. That is, I hate it. The horror I specs. Hate it. The horror specs is really, really gross. Um, I hate it too. They are super Ooh. nasty. Oh um, no! That I, one I, you just posted. Oh no! All, all oh, of no. our, all of our fucking, all of our the Audible guys and stuff. Not Audible. Uh, Spotify guys and Apple Podcast guys are like, I can't see it. Shut the fuck up. Go to the YouTube channel. <laughs> well, there's that too, but no. I gotta I gotta I got actually check out the horror specs real quick. Let me, let me look at it. The horror specs is a ferocious tyranny beast created by the hive mind to consume biomass at a sickening pace in the later stages of a planetary invasion. It is possessed by a rapacious appetite driven by the need to sate an infinite hunger. Few fools Ugh. are foolish enough to stand before a feeding horror specs, for it can devour an entire platoon of soldiers in a matter of moments, shoveling victim after victim into its three-jawed craw without ever slowing oh. down, while also taking on vehicles and even fortifications without slowing down. Any morsel that pro proves too large to be swallowed in one gulp is seized by the horror specs gar gargantuan claws and ripped, crushed, or battered apart with negligent ease. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> I, I I think what makes that that picture of the thing that you posted so awful is like he's he's it looks like he's eating a little uh, I'm assuming that's a, a an ultramarine because it's blue. That, um, how fucking dare you? That is a Tempestus Scion, and that oh, is also sorry. known as a as a Guardsman Chad. Oh, <laughs> I am so sorry, but. The funny thing about it is there's this giant tear in it. For anybody that can't see it, there's this giant tear in it with his claws, his mouth open, their tentacles everywhere. This guy has been latched onto by, like, tons of these tentacles. It is very obvious that he is going to die. And yet he's still holding on to this piece of metal. Like, he's like, I'm going to get out of this. I'm totally, there's a chance. I'm going to hang on to this thing. Dude, you are so dead. Just let it go. It's Dude, but the emperor, the emperor protects. The emperor protects, man. Yeah, yeah but he's he's got like <laughs> there's this thing that's like a hundred times bigger than him. It's latched onto him with like at least 
three or four tentacles. You, sir, are dead. Like, just let it go. Let that little wrench go. You are dead. There, <laughs> there are, there is a lot of monsters that particularly cause problems. We haven't even talked about the capillary towers yet. The the gigantic oh. fucking towers of tyranid biomass that spread around the ground, turning the whole ground into a fleshy, moving mass. And and, oh, and no. they gather all <laughs> no. the dead. They like gathers all the dead biomass around the planet to allow them to just keep consuming it. It's really, really. Oof. It's it's lots of body horror. It's lots of like xenomorph. Um, what's that? I don't know what that's referred referred to. That like Resident Evil style horror, where it's constantly like like bulging and adjusting and like consuming, like mm -hmm. the Blob, the the movie The Blob, where the dude's oh, stuck yeah, in the yeah, Blob. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like there's there's like a term for that. I don't know. Maybe it's just vorphobia. I don't fucking know what Maybe. it is, but whatever so, it is, it's so they nasty. Can turn the ground into a biomass organism that just starts eating corpses and gets stronger, and then the very ground is your enemy now. I think they usually do it as a way to gather dead biomass after the invasion because um, oh, they're okay. gathering like little small bits on the ground like plants and, and maybe like tiny animals. Okay. Um, so that's like an aftermath thing to sort of clean up whatever got left behind. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a post thing. They, they generally okay. drag all the bodies and, and uh, they, they drag them towards these giant like digestive pools. Um, mm -hmm. Which is actually an interesting thing. Um, so there's this one particular thing. So Tyranids before used to only have one army, but now they've technically got two. They have something called Gene Stealer cults, and we'll probably have an episode on them in a bit. But Gene Stealer, there's a unit called a Gene Stealer, and it does what it sounds like. It fucks around with the, with the genetic material. Uh, but yeah. what you can do is you can create like like a cult, like a tiny cult of of um, Tyranid based like people. So you start, you know, being a little different. Then you start believing in like the hive mind, and your mind starts kind of changing and being strange. And then, as for some time, you start praying to like the hive mind to arrive. And then you get these like little cults of tyrannid uh, gene stealer guys, like in the bottom of like a major city. And the idea is that they slowly will like cause a revolution, and and therefore overthrow the government. And oh. do all this crap to prepare for the Tyranid arrival. Oh, and that sucks. Yeah, they look weird too. They got like little scrotum heads. Speaking of scrotes, um, <laughs> they, their heads do look like little scrotums, and they look like they're like they actually have like a Mad Max like little rattling vibe where they're all underground, they're like skittering around. Their weapons are very uh, are very like archaic. They use like rock saws and mining lasers and mm -hmm. and like big sign like uh, like um. Uh, big like like traffic signs, kind of like in Fallout Three, they use yeah. those as weapons and stuff. Um, so it's kind of like a way to make an uprising. I, I'll talk more about that on the Gene Stealer Cult episode, but it's kind of a neat okay. idea. But particularly those towers and those giant pools of biomass of like uh, acid. Apparently, yeah. there's an interesting thing I didn't know about where right uh, at the end of a Tyranian invasion, when the Gene Stealer cults go to basically, um, well, you know jump into the fucking pool because they need to now serve the hive mind and dissolve Oof. themselves as stuff. <laughs> Apparently the Tyranids severed their link to their oh, mind no. at the at the last second. And so in that last five seconds of falling, they regain their mind, remembering everything. And they and they uh. get to, to sit on the idea that they killed their family, they killed all their friends, and they betrayed the Emperor right before they die. It is the most wow. metal shit of all time. That's so fucked up. I mean, yes, it is very metal, but oh, man, shit, you just, like, do you have to sever the link right then? Like, yeah, I they, mean, they, they don't want to, they don't want to die. <laughs> you know, they're just yeah, like, all right, you link, let's turn, oh. let's turn us into, into that shit. It's, that's <sighs> brutal. I Everything wish I about could... the Tyranids is so savage. They're they're really sad, but that's the thing is that like we don't know what, if they have motives. Because remember that part in Independence Day where uh, the alien takes over the scientist and starts like speaking through him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, that hasn't happened yet, and I kind of wish it would, um, because that mm -hmm. hasn't happened, and we don't know what their goals are. 
Yeah. All we, we know, know is that, that they're, they're here to eat. Yeah, they're just yeah. here to eat us. They they see us as prey and they've come to just consume. We don't know if they have a an objective. We've never spoken to them. We don't we don't know. Like the only person who has ever been able to tap into the Tyranid hive mind and live is an ultramarine. Of course it is. Uh, I I will be I'll be honest, I can't be too mad about this one. It's this guy named Chief Librarian Tigerius. He's like the main badass um like psyker. Uh, mm-hmm. uh so he's the only one who has ever been able to get in to the mind of the Tyranids and and survive just barely. Like just Ooh. barely. Because it's such an overwhelming psychic power. Oh yeah, because it's the hive mind. It's what's linked up to all of the Tyranids, right? So I imagine linking up with that thing is just essentially like a lesser person. Your head explodes. It's just pfft. yeah, pretty much. You start screaming and you just die. Yeah. The uh, the Tyranids in their own in their own right, considering the size and the and the power of them, like, like there's a lot of things I, I haven't said, but it's like, it's hard to structure this video. Like that you can't use poison against them. They're they're oh, too ad- I, I they're too adaptive. Yeah. They're they're um just they're all biological, but they're too adaptive. Any kind of poison they adapt to within like within like the hour. They've immediately created a new adaptation and like a vaccine for themselves, and they just simply Jeez. they won't get affected by it. You can't you can't use bioweapons against them. Um they've got like their carapaces are like as tough as tanks. It's Jeez. it's really, really freaking hard to kill Tyranids. And that's the thing, is that very often in lore. If they do beat a Tyranid uh, force, they beat off like an invasion fleet or an invading mm-hmm. force. But that that's kind of it. They're very rarely wow. actually doing any legitimate damage. I, I was going to ask, like, have they ever really, like, beaten the Tyranids? Because it seems like the Tyranids are kind of like the orcs in the sense that, like, once the Tyranids on the planet, well, fuck it. Just exterminate. It exterminate us the damn thing because it's way easier than trying to fight off these fuckers because they're just, they're so adaptable. They're so strong. They're so swarming. We've lost this planet. Tyranids are on it. Move out. There's no point in even trying to salvage anything on that planet. I mean, often in a funny way, like that is what they do. They just exterminate us any tier in the planet because there's just no point. Yeah. But at the same time, sometimes they live because oh. the thing, the, the problem is that you can't do virus bombing because that no, doesn't work. You like yeah. you have to break gotta, the like, entire planet up, right? Yeah, but yeah. that doesn't always fucking work because these Tyranids are so <laughs> goddamn resilient. There might be a couple bugs just <laughs> chilling around there. Like I'm okay. Oh my god, that's that's oof. There's that's, actually a awesome, a <laughs> awesome story I like. Uh, it's a guard story, but I'll, I'll mention it real quick. So, do you know what Ogrin are? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I, I I really couldn't tell you. Did you see that trailer for Dark Tide with the the gameplay trailer? Uh, yes. Remember that really big motherfucker? Yes. Okay, so that's an Ogrin. He's they're oh, okay. uh, they're gigantic ab- abnormal mutant humans, and they're really stupid. Um, okay. But they're just, they're huge. Uh, there's one character called Nork Deadog. He's like uh, a super good Ogrim. He's got a bunch of medals. He's my one of my favorite quotes where he's like, the Sergeant Major asked me what my job was. I said, uh, to do as I was told. He said it was the greatest answer he's ever heard and slapped another medal on me. I like being in the Imperial God. <laughs> But he has this great story where he would go and um, he had like a commanding op- officer. Cause his job is a, is a bodyguard. Um, commanding officer. And it was inside this one Tyranid known as a Moloch. And personally, to all you Tyranid players out there, okay, please use Molochs. Okay, I think, I think they're better than you give them credit for, for one. But they're so fucking cool. All right. Use your goddamn Molochs, please. Like okay, like this. This is a Moloch. This is a Moloch. Oh wow! He's Those a gigantic. Dope. He's he's it's a gigantic whip coiled tail, and it burrows underground, and it pops up right beneath you. And they're actually oh. really big too. They're like the size of like a like a like a medium Whoa, drink at like a restaurant. That's what the mini looks like. Yeah, it's badass. Holy shit! But there's a great story where the company commander of the Garm was actually being eaten by by a Moloch. 
Oh. And it was, and he was like clawing his way out of the Moloch's, uh, out of the Moloch's mouth and shit. And Nork is like, I got your boss. And he runs up to him <laughs> and he fucking takes his big forehead and the headbutts the shit out of it, cracking oh. one of its mandibles. And he reaches into the Moloch's throat and he grabs the guy out and half of his body is, is dissolved because it was in the digestive juices of the Moloch. Oh. Oh, and he's no. like, so he pulls out half the dude. Oh, he pulls no. out half the company commander. He's like dripping in, in poison. It's like, I got your boss. And he runs away. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, that commander must have died, right? Or did they actually manage to like give him a robotic lower half? Or uh, he probably got a robotic lower half. Oh, I don't, I, I don't know. Appa did, apparently, they didn't like him. Apparently, he's kind of a coward, but maybe he got okay. shot later. Who knows? Um, uh, but Shai said something that was a little interesting. Inquisitor Cryptman tried to preemptively exterminate us worlds that are exterminatus worlds that hadn't even been invaded yet to try and starve out Tyranid fleets in advance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, though they he, okay, Cryptman is the oh, I think the only Inquisitor that has ever been removed from the Inqu Inquisition. Um, oh, <laughs> I think because I think because he was too mean, which is. Wow. A, Fucking hilarious to me. That's that is a wild concept where the Imperium is like, yeah, you are you're a little too mean. You're doing things a little too crazy. <laughs> not just you're the, the Imperium. Imperium. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the, it's the Inquisition. We haven't even talked. Oh, okay. the Inquisition. Oh, okay. Do you know what the motto of the Inquisition is? The actual slogan. The slogan. What's that? Innocence proves nothing. <laughs> <laughs> ah. And he I was, see. and he was too mean. He was too mean, even for the people. I'm granted. I kind of get it. <laughs> oh, no. He ex he exterminated entire worlds that didn't have people on uh, that had like billions of people on them to stop the Tyranids from eating them to starve them. I get yeah. the concept. Would have preferred evacuation first. I was gonna say you could <laughs> evacuate those people if you know that the Tyranids are coming. Be like, hey guys, Tyranids are coming. We got to get you the fuck out of here, and then we're just gonna blow up the fucking planet. Like, why you gotta blow it up with the people still on it? Yeah, would have. Uh, God damn it! Actually, we really should talk about the Inquisition at some point soon because they're a pretty big deal. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, it's hard to structure this episode because the Tyranids are so horrifying and there's so much about them but really when you talk about the tyranids you're mainly just talking about like the different units like wow that bug is so cool look at that bug look at that so it's so neat look at that terrifying hive mind you know and that's it's, what we've been doing too <laughs> yeah it's oh, look at how cool the nids are yeah wait what what did shy say they also have tyranid waifus norn queens who are in charge of genetically designing new nids and stuff want to see wait, some sexy fan art i think i may have blotted that from my brain is that canon? Like, do they actually have like Norn well, queens that are? Nor in I'm sure there are Norn queens because they're probably used to. Um, I think they they adjust and and uh, and they they make new nids. They make like fancier, crazier new nids to deal with different problems. Gotcha. But they're not like anime waifus. They're just like these big blobs of that just spit out bugs. I assume, which Basically. is probably one of the most grossest things you could ever see. But they, I'm they sure pretty the internet much has turned it into like some fucking anime foot fetish. Let me, uh, let me. Or some anime armpit fetish because that's what the internet do. Uh, I'm looking so. on Google <laughs> Images right now and I can confirm that is what is happening. <laughs> can oh. confirm. Do not oh. like. Yeah, do not I'm, like. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take your word for it and not look that up. The, um. um the Tyranids are well with the, with the the queens though the Norn queens and stuff. That that's one of the actual like fancy nice things about the Tyranids that just because they can consistently and consistently make more and more bugs. Trying to hyper specialize against them is like not impossible. It's like not impossible. It's just yeah. it's just it just doesn't work. There are so many different Tyranids and there are so many different horrifying horrifying creatures that they keep on building that <sighs> let me. You, Here's a, here's a quote. <laughs> Let me give you a quote. Let me give you a quote. Okay. Um, this is from an Inquisitor, of course. Inquisitor Bronislaw Shivak, whatever. 
Um, there is a cancer eating at the Imperium, with each decade it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination is thought and purpose, which functions on an unimaginable galactic scale, and all we can do is try to stop the swarms of bioengineered monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salve our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race, but if it is aware of us at all, it must only know us as prey. The wow. Tyranids are, I, I wish I could do more than just say the Tyranids are fucking insane, but they are, they are insane. They are probably they the are. biggest threat to the entire Imperium. And if I see a Tyranid player, a tabletop player, I consider them nothing but a Chad because <laughs> they're super cool. And I, I just, they're just fun. Like you gotta like bugs, you know, you, there's, there's no like creepy crawly bugs. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there's not much lore. There's not many characters to role play. So you're like, I'm just going to be bugs. I like bugs. <laughs> Sadly, GW say, like, does not in, like them. Oh, um, in the tabletop, like, I, I, I guess they don't really have any, well, do they have named characters? Cause you said like there are secondhand uh stories about specific tyrannids that are maybe a little bigger oh. they're maybe oh. red or whatever so are there any like specific tyrannid units in the tabletop that are like yo this motherfucker though oh the swarm lord most definitely uh the swarm lord <laughs> is basically is the largest synapse based creature around uh of the tyrannid race sp ever spotted um oh that's the guy that, that hawked off uh, the dude's legs. Oh, um, oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Actually, I would. I let me let me tell you a story though. Let me tell you a story about my favorite Tyranid character. Okay, because we should that talk about this. Of him? Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the Swarm Lord. Bad. He is a bad motherfucker. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Swarm Lord is fucking awesome. And ironically, wow. ironically, even though GW hates them on the tabletop, I think he has a really overpowered ability. <laughs> What's that? Um, so Nids are not very good right now. They're 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 kind of mediocre. Um, okay. But he has a special ability that allows you to double move a unit. So oh. um, basically, you could take an entire giant squad of units or a giant monster, and instead of moving them like like you're like twenty four inches away from each other, you can move them like ten inches and then just do it again. So then you have like a twenty inch move, and then oh. that means you just charge them, and it's really terrifying because then he'll take like a fucking. A giant like squad of like a hundred termagants or some bullshit and just like yeet them turn one they're like ah <laughs> yeah it doesn't mean like the turnits are overpower anything or, or very good at all but that move in particular i'm like oh this makes me sweat um all let right. me tell you let me tell you about fucking old one eye though i okay. love old one eye it's he's so cool um so he's the thing called the carnifex uh from okay. high fleet behemoth uh during the assault on an ultramarine world and he just like would bonk fucking guard tanks like they were like bugs. It was insane. Wow. Um, however, its oh. rampage was only stopped when a random Imperium guy shot a plasma pistol right through his eye and into its brain. And oh. it wasn't Good able shot. to regenerate its eye, but it was permanently scarred with a plasma burn on its eye. Mm -hmm. um, now, however, decades later, a band of smugglers stumbled across the frozen, intact body of it on the same planet. They thought it out, hoping to get bounty for the corpse, and oh, but then its wounds no. began to immediately heal, and it slaughtered the smugglers. Of course and, it did. And so then, on that world, the Kalth world, it just started doing its hive mind instincts and started mindlessly slaughtering stuff. Killing populations, killing domes. <laughs> and, sure. and then... And then it eventually left over a bunch of termagants and gene stealers there as well, and it started taking control of them like a little, like a little boss, a little boss man. And then, mm -hmm. so then an ultramarine guy, because they, they needed aid, so some of the ultramarines came back, they tracked it down, and then finally, they uh, uh, their big like sniper guy, a guy named Scout Sergeant Teleon, made one in a, a one in a million shot that shot and hit it directly in the same eye socket, oh, and then it oh, immediately I... fell down a gigantic ravine. And was never seen again. And then... Oh, poor little one-eye. But but then, it has been seen again. But this time, oh. on different planets. And now, it's been told that old one-eye has been finally brought down. But it's been like 12 different reports of old one-eye being finally brought down. <laughs> so and old one-eye has died several times. 
not really because it keeps coming back. But how did it get off world? It, it's on different worlds. Like, I, like it, it, it's the thing is, it's like it's like a it's like a legend. <laughs> it's like a myth. It's a legend. It's the it's I, the it's the legend of good old one eye. If you if you don't eat your vegetables, old one eye will fucking eat you at night, kid. Yeah, they, I was they, gonna say maybe maybe the hive mind is recreating a perfect copy of its scar and all. But it hasn't been found yet either, so it's still like the original might be still out there. Like no one ever found the body. No, like, it just fell down a ravine, and they never actually got the body. The, the Ultraman guy tried to find it, but he couldn't. <laughs> so where the where the fuck did he go? <laughs> also, fuck those smugglers that find a frozen tear and are like, you know what we should do? We should thaw this motherfucker out. No, we, you know what? I, There's I nothing want some terrifying money. about this. Let's yeah, I need some money. Let's thaw this fucking thing out. Are you stupid? Look at this thing. <laughs> hey, What's some cat? Hey man, never <laughs> underestimate cash. Cash money. They needed that drip and they needed some money for it, right? <laughs> uh, the tear. I like old one eye though, because I, I have a cat named Gidget and she only has one eye, and so I'm 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 a little sympathetic to the one eye. Go go get him, Gidget. Creations. Go yeah, go, go get consume him, the biomass. <laughs> consume the biomass, Gidget. They'll never be able to take you down. <laughs> so I know we normally talk a little bit about uh tabletop at the end of the episode, and I think it's probably a good time to do so. Yeah, um, let's do it. They're not good. Um, mm -hmm. Tyranids have, have notoriously been kind of bad for like years. I think I'm a little scared because I think when the Tyranids become good, we're in some deep shit. <laughs> um, they recently have actually gotten some nice buffs and some of their big monsters from a thing called Forge World are actually quite scary, particularly this mm -hmm. one monster called the Demacarion, um, which is really cool looking. Uh, yeah. but... Uh, even so, it's very much like they're, they're not that great, but they they are like the big horde army, bunch of big bugs with a whole bunch of little bugs running around with yeah. them. Um, it is kind of cool though because they do have like synapse. If you kill the big bug, the smaller bugs are less effective. So oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say as far as tyranids were concerned on the tabletop, I would assume that all of their units are super cheap because they're just a bunch of bugs they're supposed to swarm you maybe they're not individually the strongest but like you can you can put out like you know triple the amount of units that like i don't know an ultra rain force couldn't you could maybe just have numbers instead of just like a few tanky units yeah absolutely that's pretty much how tyranids operate some people like to do a thing called tyranid monster mash which is just a whole bunch of big big bugs mm -hmm. um it all depends i obviously i like a nice mixture it, it, they're not great right now, so it's a little bit hard to perfectly uh, nail down exactly what their big thing is. Uh, ironically, I think they've got better shooting than they do melee. Um, those, <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> those penis monsters things we saw earlier are actually <laughs> really effective. Um, yeah. Particularly the the Tyranid uh, Exocrine are pretty nasty. But mm -hmm. but yeah, dude, Tyranids, they're the Great Devourer is what they're known as, with the forces of the Hive Mind. Oh, they are very creepy, and I I love how creepy they are, but God, they're so nasty. They're, they're super so duper nasty. Gross. <laughs> All of their units are so gross, and they do such gross things, and it's just... Ugh. And they got scrote guns. Ugh. They got scrote guns. I, the I like... The have scrote heads. Yep, it's all scrote in this one. This is... This, this is yep. I want this to be the title, Shy. <laughs> I want to. I want to be uh, Tyranids and the Return of the Scrote. <laughs> the Revenge of the Scrote. <laughs> Wait, boys! I found literal Tyranid scrotes. Oh, oh no! no it's the spore really mines. Need to look at this. It's the spore oh, mines. It's <laughs> no, they do look like scrotes. <laughs> I forgot about the spore mines. Shit. The Revenge of the Scrotes. <laughs> It all comes full circle, just like a giant scrote. It all full circle. Oh, god damn! Oh, oh I, I think I think I found worse ones. Okay, we got we got to stop doing this before. No. We got we got we got we got to stop. All right. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, we got to stop. Definitely. Oh my god, those are scrotes. I hate it. Everything <laughs> all right, is all right. awful. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode of Adept is Ridiculous. Uh, who's next? Is it me? It might be you. I think it's you. Night, because it was Custodies, which was me, then Night Lords, then the Nids, and then, yeah, so it's me again. It's you again. You know, I think it's time. I think it's time, my dude. I think what's it's time. The, what's it time for? What do you, what I think do, it's what time. Do do? For, I think it's time for the Imperial Guard. Oh, 
Shit. I think it's time for the guard. I think it's time to get my my first my first eighth edition army. Let's fucking go. Let's go. go. It's Next time, time for the guard. It's time Let's for the go. guard. It's time for the guard. Es particularly Ooh. because it'll allow me to preface into the fall of Cadia, which I think would be a very good episode. Okay. I'm 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 stoked. I'm ready. All right. Well, in that case, thank you to everyone who's watching. We'll see you next week for an Imperial Guard. My name has been Bricky. You can find me at Bricky on Twitch, Bricky on YouTube, Bricky on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. DK, where can they find you? You can find me DK Diamantes everywhere, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, except Instagram. One of these days, I'll come into a shitload of money and I'll just buy that brand out. But until then, real DK Diamantes on Instagram. And of That's course, it. you can find Shy at Quiet Shy or Quite Shallow. Thanks to all of our patrons and to all of you people I'm currently looking at in the Discord server. You are posting some real curse shit. I, I see that you've done that. That what's that Indian song where they're like do 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 do? They 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 deep faked that onto a bunch of Marines, and then I like that. And oh, I'll no. we'll see you next week for more scrotes. <laughs>